Hello and welcome to another episode of West Underground. Today we have David fucking Boyle. I can't believe it. I can't believe that he's actually here. This man is one of the funniest Australian comedians I've ever heard. Um, check out his podcast, uh, I'm Quitting Alcohol. The man is a reformed alcoholic and he's in the flesh with us right here all the way from India. How are you, man? <laughs> I'm pretty good, boys. You? Oh, man, I'm pretty fantastic. well. I can't believe that you're actually here. Like, I can't believe somehow we've managed to pull in the boil. Like, it's just... All the way from India. Yeah, man. And like, I just want to know, like, when did you get the courage and the fucking balls to start your career in comedy? Wow. That was like, I was at rock bottom of my life and there was nothing else. I'd flunked out of university. I was an alcoholic. I was living... I was living on a trundle at the back of the couch of my brother's one bedroom apartment and he was a schizophrenic. So I was rock bottom. So there was nothing else to do. There was nothing else for me to do. <laughs> well, man, I'm so glad that you, that you, you did it, man. Cause you're making, you know, so many people I know fucking laugh myself included. And um, you know, it's just, it's just brilliant. And I, I love your podcast. I was telling you just off air, I found out your podcast cause I quit drinking. And the next day Siri must've heard me telling my friends because all of a sudden your podcast is recommended on my Spotify. Yeah. That happens to so many of the listeners. They send me messages saying just quit drinking and Spotify sent me your podcast as a recommendation. So they're looking in on you. Oh man, well, I'm glad because it, it really helped me because you're so honest and transparent. And I think it's, you know, if you're, I feel like there's a lot of people that bullshit online, especially, and like, you know, put on a false facade, but yours is so transparent and honest. You can see through it and you can, um, you know, it's just very, very relatable if, especially if you're Australian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you listened to any other, like, I don't know alcohol like recovering alcoholic podcasts or whatever like i found i found a couple but then there's that whole element where people suddenly think that they're a psychologist and talk yeah you're suddenly a doctor and it's just it's just it's just horrible to listen to and and like the preachy bullshit as well like yeah 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 they no one no one was really talking about how much they loved drinking and how fucking good it was for like most of their life until it got out of control and you had to give it up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it sounds like it was an awful thing, but it was really fun. No, it was the best fucking time ever. Like I would never fucking take it away. It was great. Yeah. Like, and then I, I also I'd find like when I was looking for podcasts, like, like a couple different hippie people like Russell Brand and you know, that kind of side of recovery um yeah no i found it very hard to, to try to relate to russell brand because i never had a heroin problem myself yeah that yeah did russell brand have a heroin problem as well like didn't he yeah, quit he everything did. when he was yeah, like he, 19? He was on, yeah he was on everything he had to quit yeah. everything yeah. yeah now he just speaks fast and yeah naturally, and naturally high vegan yeah you know, everything he, is really healthy he didn't do much damage because he doesn't stutter at all. And he knows all these long words. I can mm. barely, I can barely spit out a sentence. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like that guy has just been, you know, sat at home as a kid and just must've read like Shakespeare, you know, on repeat, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does it? The guy could use long words, like long words in, in between each other. And just like, <laughs> how does he do it? And it makes sense. And it's clever and smart. Yeah, it, how, do, how do we know it makes sense? I don't even know half the words he's fucking saying. Oh, it's because of the rest of the crowd's clapping as well, so I just wanted to fit in. Yeah, so everyone's <laughs> just clapping. No one has any idea what the fuck he's saying. Yeah, so it goes straight, like so far above your head. We're like, oh, that must be right. You know? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. That's all you need to do if you want to pretend you're smart. Well, he is smart. I like Russell Brand. But yeah. if you want to give off the air that you're a genius to say a few long words that other people don't understand yeah i might go buy a dictionary after this and start uh, practicing it won't stick i've tried it oh. the words won't stick i tried for years writing down long words to pretend i was like a genius and 
whenever whenever it would come to the time to whip one out, I would forget and it would just mumble. Yeah, look, that might be the same thing. Like I, I was I was raised in Dubbo, so you know, I probably would go back to referring to my like Dubbo vocabulary. Yeah, Dubbo. you would get bashed in Dubbo if you sounded like R- Russell Brand. Oh, dude, you'd get bashed in like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't make it down the street no man like you'd, you'd try to go into a shop and order a piece of food and the the you know the girl at the register would even give you a slap in the head yeah even like i used to i used to read uh, like a little bit when i was growing up like a little bit i didn't yeah. read that much and even the little i read improved my vocabulary just a little bit and everyone was like calling me gay oh like man. they thought i was they thought i was gay well look i i, I <laughs> well at least it did something for you man like i read because we lived on a farm and there was no fucking internet till i was like you know 16 so there's nothing else to do other than yeah. read books and still none of it fucking sank in. I could read a book and, you know, have to think about what it was about five minutes after I finished. I knew it was good, but I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no, it's, it's doing it. shit in the background, in your subconscious. It's, it's working its magic in the background. Cause I can't, re- I can't remember half the shit I read, but every now and then it will manifest itself into some sort of idea. I'm like, Oh yeah. So that was from a book about 20 years ago. Oh man, well, uh, oh, that gives me something to look forward to. Hopefully, it's done. Yeah. So, soon. so just read, even if you don't understand it, just get the fucking words in there because your subconscious does all the work anyway. All right. My, my consciousness, like my, who I, I, I have no fucking idea what's going on. I just rely on the background, the <laughs> subconscious. <laughs> I can't do anything. Well, it's working for you, man. I, I, oh, look, I have to ask one thing. You know the theme song for your podcast? Is it a variation of like Jimi Hendrix's Wind Cries Mary? Yeah, that's what it is. It's changed just enough to uh, beat Spotify's like, what is it? The, the algorithm or whatever it is. Yeah. So I don't have to pay for it. Oh, well, you know, you don't have actually got the wind cries, Mary. It's just that, dun, dun, you know, that little slide of the chord progression. I was like, has he got a bit of Hendrix in there? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I, I, I actually had the original up there for a while and then Spotify took it down and then, yeah, I had to change it all. And then I had another song in there, an old James Rain song. And then Spotify took it down again. So I was just like, oh, fuck it, I'll pay for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's it's it's awesome, man. I love it. But um, you play a bit of guitar, don't you? Oh, please. I <laughs> I tried to learn guitar for like six, seven years, and I could just never. I could never make it to like a bar chord. I never made it that far. I I I could play like C, D, E, A, A minor, E minor. And then once it got to like bar chords and like hammer on, hammer off and all that sort of shit, I was, I had no idea. <laughs> I've no musical talent at all. Oh man. Well, it's something you can, uh, you can, you can practice. So there's still hope for you, man. Yeah. I, I skipped over to uh, piano. So I started learning piano, but then when I came to India, I, uh, I didn't have a piano. So I got rid of it and oh. I haven't bought it. I haven't bought one since I've been here. You have to go get like a sitar or something. Yeah, they're 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 really cool. Are they I expensive over there? there? No, they're not. They're like 150 bucks or something. I I went in to buy a microphone the other day at a music store, and I like the sitars here are beautiful too. Like just even to have one in the corner of your house would be cool. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have it's, to get uh, them, man. Yeah, I will. But the thing is, when you're importing it back to Australia, mm-hmm. you have to get it fumigated and all that sort of shit because of the wood. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. a pain in the ass. But I'll definitely get one. Yeah, for sure. And, look at. and uh, like you've traveled to India, I suppose, at like the worst time in history to go yeah. to India. <laughs> yeah. Right at the very start of the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. man. 
you know, like what, what has that experience been like? Because I, for us, we've seen it on newspapers, on television. Was it really like hell? Like that's how it looked in the, you know, Daily Telegraph and fucking Facebook what? stuff that we would see. It's, uh, well, it was in a sense like there was people dying. There was people, a lot of people dying. The hospitals were full. They were running out of oxygen. Yeah, there was a lot of people dying at one stage. We know, well, my wife's family know like 20 people that passed away in that short period of time. It was about two months. And then uh, my sister-in-law is a doctor and she was working in the COVID ward and there was a lot of people dying in there. It was a little bit up and down in her one, but then we know a few other doctors and they were saying like 50, 60 people were dying a day in the COVID wards of like five or six different hospitals. So, and Bangalore, it was bad, but it wasn't as bad as Delhi and Mumbai and stuff like that. So it, it was pretty hectic. It was dark there for a while. Oh, it was real dark, but um, it's fine now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Is it fun over there at the moment, man? Cause it looks, it looks fun when you do your little, when you do your vlogs, I watch it and it's like, man, this looks like a fun place. It's so fun at the moment. Now everything's open, completely yeah. open. People are like barely wearing masks anymore. There's no restrictions. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I think, I think everyone that was going to die, died in the second wave because this third wave has just hasn't kicked off. Yeah. And I, I've been, go, I've been at weddings and I've been traveling around a bit and I've had contact with COVID-19 that's for sure. But yeah, it's. Uh, and what just, role do you think you played in ending the, ending the lockdown? Oh, I reckon I was one of the first the first to jump on board the ivermectin train. <laughs> so that's all I've been doing, taking ivermectin and promoting it all throughout India. Oh man. And it, the, whole, the horse dewormer. Yeah. Over, over here. I don't even know if you, if people can even access it. Nah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you can. I said, I sent my dad a hundred tablets the other day. Because you can still, with the vaccine, you can still get the COVID-19. So over here, there's like 14% or 20% vaccinated, oh, but shit. they're still getting it. With the ivermectin, you seem to not even get it at all. So yeah, I'll just yeah. run with that for now. Yeah, I sat through and watched the, the whole Joe Rogan experience about it. And um yeah, it opened my eyes, especially because before that, all I heard about it is just it being a, you know, a horse dewormer. I thought, what the fuck? And then yeah. I looked at that and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. There's more to this story than what, what appears. Well, they're handing out in Goa now, they're handing out uh, little COVID-19 packs and it's got like vitamin C, D, zinc and ivermectin. And that has one of the lowest rates in India. Wow. The poor, the poor countries can't afford to get vaccinated. Like here, mainly the rich people are getting vaccinated because it costs money here. It costs you 20 Australian dollars, which like poor people, that's, that's a lot of money to poor people. Like a, a poor person here, like a laborer, they're earning maybe a hundred dollars a month. Oh. So to get, to get your family vaccinated, which is going to be like fucking 10 kids as well to get them all vaccinated. It's, it, it's going to be pretty hard. So you got to have alternatives in poor countries. Yeah, for sure. Definitely an eye opener for those poor countries struggling with the virus and all that. Yeah. Well, India is not struggling anymore. That's the crazy thing. It's, it's like that, that second wave has caused some sort of like herd immunity or something all yeah. the hospitals are empty man my sister-in-law's hospital they're getting like one patient a day covid patient and usually it's a double jab person <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah oh man well um <clears throat> the finish line now is set in australia for the 11th um do you think you'll be back here anytime soon the 11th of what 
The 11th of, oh. is it November? October is no. opening day. It's October. opening. Everything's it's opening. opening 11th of October. And then every four weeks, more restrictions get lifted. Really? So That's by crazy. December will be like no masks, no like square per meters, just everything be opening. And then they might be doing like overseas travel to London and LA mid Really? Yeah, just like a bubble thing between Sydney and like Melbourne, Sydney have that bubble to Los Angeles and London and a two week, obviously two week um, isolation as well, but they might be scrapping that as well. Ah, that's crazy. So essentially what they've done over the last 18 months is wait till it's got to the absolute peak and then opened up. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So what the fuck was the last 18 months about? <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll have no idea till this day, but you know, I don't think yeah. the, government, the government just can't afford to keep paying us 750 bucks not to work anymore. <laughs> yeah, one of, my, one of my comedian mates, he's getting, because he qualified under some small business thing, he's getting $6,000 a fortnight. He's getting $12,000 a month. And his plan is, like he's been getting it for two or three months now. As soon as it opens up, he's going overseas <laughs> with all the money. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a joke. But <laughs> I'll come I'll come back if if you can leave again. I'm not I'm not going into lockdowns and I'm not getting stuck there again. Dude, I don't think they can afford to put us back in lockdown anymore. Well, maybe not in New South Wales, but this, um Victoria might still try to put you in a lockdown. Well, all my friends in in Melbourne are fucking cooked now. Yeah. Like they, I don't. They're gonna come out with some mental issues. Yeah, like, I don't blame them, man. All my friends down in Melbourne have come back up to Sydney because it's like this is fucked. Yeah, I don't know if I can go back down to Melbourne. If if I come back to Australia anytime soon, it will probably be Sydney. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you just can't. I, I, I just could not get stuck in some bullshit lockdown like that again. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but all my friends, there's some definite mental health challenges going on down there. Yeah, for sure. Well, they haven't, they haven't seen people for so long. Everyone has to stay in their house. Yeah, yeah and, and they've been communicating on social media, which is not... Not ideal, yeah. Well, it's not real. Yeah. You need that contact. Absolutely. You can't tell what's going on on social media. No, you really can't. And like, it's funny, like how like everyone will either go to two sides on social media. Like I, I you reopen up a post about, you know, a dog's better than cats and you'll have people arguing about everything and anything. It's insane. Yeah, it, it's the arguments are so, and you get dragged into it as well. Like someone will post something so fucking anno that annoys me so much. And I'll have to, f I'll be typing something out and I'll have to physically rip myself away from it. Just put the phone away. <laughs> Why are you getting into this stupid fucking argument? Yeah. Like, uh, sometimes I'll do it. I'll say, so I'll say something to someone who's posted some shit and 10 minutes later, I'll take it down because I'm like, I, I don't want to be in this, this argument. What the fuck yeah. am I doing? I don't blame you, man. I think I'm nearly at that point where I can get rid of it like um you know what i mean just kind of deactivate it to a degree now like i've, I've yeah. just been trying to detox off it and not use it as much as i used to you know what you know what i mean yeah yeah i only really use instagram now anyway i could easily get rid of facebook facebook's fucking yeah, yeah. trash yeah. you can get rid of facebook but without removing a messenger which is a great which is a great idea so you can yeah. have messenger still logged in, but don't have to see it on the news feeds. So you can still contact people if you need to. I reckon that's a great thing that they did. Yeah, even I don't really need to contact people. I was looking mm. through my messenger list the other day and I was like, do I really need to speak to these idiots? <laughs> my, all my fucking friends. I'm mm. like, no, I could, I could lose most of you. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. Have you been doing much stand up in India? Like, have you been trying to get out there and do a bit how's your hindi no nah, my hindi sucks but uh in in bangalore they speak uh a different language it's Kannada. it's what? um <laughs> what way? It's 
Canada. It's K A N A D A. Oh, Canada. It was like I thought it was pronounced with the C then. I was like, no way, that's a real language. Oh, I think I lost you for a second there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, we're back. Oh, we're back. Okay. I thought you said Canada, and I was like, no way. That's a real language. <laughs> that yeah, that would that's Australian. that's what the Australian language should be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I speak a little bit of that Canada. Well, oh. a, enough enough to like placate the relatives, anyway. But uh, yeah, I've been doing a few gigs lately. I'm, I'm actually doing one tonight. Um, I the last gig I did, I fucking ate a dick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I bombed. Like, what's but, the comedy scene like? Do they find you any? Like, what do they find funny? It's, it's, it's a still, it's still an immature type scene. It's like, um, it's only 10 years old, the whole entire scene, like the oldest comedian in India has been doing it about 10 years. Yeah. So there, about three or four years ago, there was a couple of clubs in Bangalore and it was, it was thriving. Like you would go to an open mic, a small gig, and there'd be 80 people. There was a bunch of comics, but they all left, went to Mumbai. And because of COVID and all that sort of shit, uh, a lot of places are sort of closed down. So you're sort of just gigging in like coffee shops and shit like that at the moment. So there's like one good gig I've been doing, yeah. which, which has been going all right. I, I that's the one I bombed at, but there were extenuating circumstances to that bomb. <laughs> now, speaking about bombing, what has like, I imagine where well, that's a hard part of comedy that you've got to see and paper over and you've got a bomb to, to, to get good, but what was the worst bomb you've ever done? All right. The worst bomb was I, so for the first few years, I didn't let anyone come see me, especially my wife and my mom. And we had just got back from India and I hadn't done a gig in like five months, but I'd been like, I'd been working on my stand up in the mirror and all that. And I was like, this is, this is it. Like I'm, I'm ready to roll now. And I went, we were, we were up in Queensland. So I did my first gig in Queensland. I'd never done a gig in Queensland before. And I was at a backpackers and I hadn't done a gig in like five, six months. My wife had never seen me before. And my mum had never seen me before. And I was trying this new, like experimental shit because I just got back from India and I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah. Dalai Lama type shit. <laughs> and uh, I get on stage and I do like 30 seconds, 40 seconds to just like complete silence, like complete fucking silence. And I start sweating and I start panicking. Then I do about another like 30 to 45 seconds. And, um, Oh, sorry, my kid just walked in. Oh. And um, uh, the girl in the front row goes, this fucking sucks. And turns to her friend and just starts talking. I do another 45 seconds. The whole crowd are just talking to each other like nothing's going on, like I'm not even standing there. And then I do another 30 seconds and the tech guy just turns the music on. <laughs> oh. Just turns the fucking music on. And I put the microphone in the stand and just walk off. And that was, that was the most humiliating fucking experience of my entire life. It was so fucking bad because it was the first time my wife had ever seen me. My mum had ever seen me. Oh, it was just so, so bad. It took me, I went around for a walk for about an hour afterwards just to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It was just so fucking brutal. In that and then seconds, is that an eternity? Like when you... Man, it's <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, man. Man. I got through like 
all my material in like two and a half minutes. I was, oh man, it just, it, it's the worst feeling in the fucking world. It still happens like all the time. Yeah. Like if, if you're a comedian and you're trying shit, you'll, you'll tank all the time still. Yeah. But that, that one hurt. That one, I, I literally, when I was doing that walk around the block for an hour, I was like, now is when I quit or I continue. And I was so fucking close to quitting. I was, if I didn't have a gig the next day, I had a gig the very next day and I changed some shit and I had a good gig. But fuck, I was ready to quit. It reminds was, me of that episode of The Simpsons where Bart Simpson did the catchphrase and he comes out on stage and it doesn't work anymore and he's just there in silence. Yeah. It just remind me of that. <laughs> yeah. That's what, oh man. Yeah. And, cool. and the hubris I had because I had all this, I'd been traveling India for like six, seven weeks and I was coming up with like these new ideas, these new ways to do comedy. And I was just, I didn't have the skills to pull any of it off. Yeah. So it was just like, it was so brutal. Wow. It was humiliating beyond anything I, I'd ever felt before. Like if it, you fuck up in your band, like I met, like it's a bit easy because you've got four other, you know, fellas with you, but doing stand up comedy, man, I feel like it's just so much more brutal. Like, cause you, it's all on, all on you in a sense. Yeah. It's, and the silence, the yeah. silence is deafening. Like if you, there's nothing like being on stage and like pouring out your heart and people just rejecting who you are completely. Like they don't like you. They hate what you're saying. And it's all coming from in, like, it's like they're saying we hate who you are as a person with that silence. It's brutal. But what about the, what's like the funniest moment you've had as a comedian then like getting away from the bombing, like what's the, what's probably like, like the, a highlight moment that made you, you know, like smile, not, not necessarily a gig, but like, you know, like a story you can tell that's like the, one of those like highlight moments of being a comedian that reassures, you know, reassures. Man, I've had so few highlights in my stand up comedy career. I would be, all oh, my whole comedy career has been a low light. It has, it has, it has been just a never ending series of downs. But the, the good, the goods, you sort of forget about the good ones. You, you only really remember that, like, the, the bad shit. I tell you, I tell you what was good, what, I, what was like a little bit of a landmark was just before I left Sydney to come to India, I did a, a gig and I was headlining, I was headlining the gig and I put it out on instagram that i was doing this gig and six people who were fans of the podcast came to watch me so oh. that was the first time i'd had like fans come and i was like well that's pretty that's pretty cool <laughs> the other day i was having like a glass of water and i was listening to like your fucked up friday which was on a thursday oh uh, yeah but anyway, I was having a drink and you're telling that story about some poor bastard who like fucking fucked a MILF and did all this shit. And it, I, I just fucking, I, I like choked on the water and for a second, I just couldn't, you know, when you're having like a hard belly laugh and you just got, yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> just that, that, that story just fucking killed me. Yeah. I fucking love that story as well. Some of the stories that get sent in. So I do this segment on Fridays on my podcast, Fucked Up Fridays, and just loose units send in stories about them getting fucked up. And I read it out. Dude. And some of the stories that have been getting sent in lately are fucking funny. Dude, the lo- about the midget? Oh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he picked the fucking midget up. I spoke to him afterwards as well. I was like, is that thing about the midget legit? So he picked a midget up. He was trying to pick this midget up. <laughs> And he said, he said, without asking her, they went up to the bar. He picked her up and placed her on the counter of the bar so she could choose her drink. I, it was fucking gold. 
<laughs> oh, man, like, and then, and then the nun of that story too, like just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the nun of yeah. The- <laughs> oh, I had me dying. And dude, like, I feel like the stories you even tell about your own life are fucking hilarious. Like the stories about like you being in, you know, you've been in like the, 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 the Coke hostel or something for like five days that, you know, that made me laugh. And the story about you in Vietnam made me laugh. Like your stories are fucking hilarious. Yeah. 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 That's just, that was, that was in my prime (laughs) when I was just on a suicide mission almost. But dude, it's like, you know, that's a life that not many people live. And like, I, I I love hearing that stuff because it's just, you know, it's, it's just like really, really raw. And I feel like that's where I admire that you have fucking balls of steel to kind of, you know, confess that stuff as well. Yeah, well, I think because, I don't know, there's like when people get to the point where they they have to sort of like give up drinking, a lot of people like shit on it. Like, I wish I never did any of that stuff, but that was, that was my fucking life. I loved it up until a certain point where it starts destroying you. So I'm like, yeah, you, you should talk about the fun stuff too. Oh, absolutely, man. And like, and plus it makes the best stories too. Like, you know, it just does. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. Hands down. And I think even feel like, you know, straight square people enjoy, you know, listening to that kind of stuff too. Cause it just kind of gives you a window into, you know, insanity in a sense, you know? Yeah, man. Like I've, I've got listeners from like neurosurgeons in New York <laughs> to 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 like fucking heroin addicts in like Dubbo, like that sort of shit. <laughs> wow, Jesus! Yeah, there, it, there's a big range of different type of people that listen to it, and most of the people that listen to the podcast have no interest in quitting alcohol either. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's there's a few people. There's quite a few people that have quit alcohol that listen to it, but there's a bunch that it there's a bunch of people that it almost inspires to drink more <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, you know well at least i'll have stories to tell you on friday yeah that's right you gotta <laughs> keep the podcast going yeah. oh man but um like in in terms of like um you know your you know your comedy career it seems like it's been a very like rocky road but um, do you ever have like moments now where you look back on it? Like I have moments where I look back on my life and like, you know, when you think about something funny and it just fucking makes you laugh, like you could be in the supermarket, just buying a fucking, you know, something for dinner and you just start giggling to yourself. Cause you're having a memory from a while ago. Do you ever have those? Yeah. Yeah. No, the comedy career has been, it's been brutal, but it has been fun as well. Like even the, even the down it's all been down times, but even the worst times of it, you look back and you're like, fuck, that's funny because like, what, what were we thinking? (laughs) Like I had, we had no idea what the fuck we were doing for a long, long, long time. And the thing is like uh, the bunch of comedians I sort of hang out with in Melbourne, they're the funniest guys in Melbourne, I consider them the funniest guys of Melbourne and they're just, they're not getting like the, the big gigs or anything like that, but it doesn't really matter to me as long as uh, your stand-up's rock solid, yeah. you've got good jokes, you're pushing the boundaries. That's, that's, that's what I like. And who, who are you influenced by? Like, cause you, I feel like you're Australia's like Joey Diaz. <laughs> hey, that would be cool. That would be a cool moniker. Um, I like Joey. I, I actually saw Joey Diaz at the comedy store in LA a couple of years back, and he just absolutely fucking blew the roof off. It was it was magic to see. He just jumped on the stage, started riffing, blew the roof off. So I was I was very happy to see that. Um, the guys. Like uh, when I first started, it was Bill Burr, Doug Stanhope, uh, Louis C.K., all these guys. Oh, yeah, the Nate classic B- legends, yeah. 
very much so. Yeah, yeah. And then Nate, Nate Bargatze. There's a few New York comedians now. Big Jay Okerson, Kurt Metzger, all these guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. I should. I hope still I should, alive, man. Yeah, I tell you what. <laughs> I was thinking about it the other day because Norm McDonald died. Yeah, and Norm was also another one of my favorites, and um, I was like, "When the fuck is Doug Stanhope gonna die?" But he seems to be trucking along pretty good. And I was thinking, if Doug Stanhope outlives Joe Rogan, then I've I've made some big mistakes in life. I should have just continued drinking. Yeah, look, if he if he outlives Joe Rogan, then he's like a you know a Keith Richards type of dude. Yeah, yeah. imagine that Joe Rogan dies before Stanhope. Stanhope's been a, a, like a, a one or two pack of ciggies per day for 30, 40 years. Ro- <laughs> Rogan, Rogan spends like four hours in the sauna and an ice bath every day. Yeah, man. I f- and, and kills his own meat and is very like treats his body like a temple. Yeah. Yeah. That would be sweet, sweet justice. <laughs> now do you find like rogan funny like i love listening to rogan talk and being like as a as a personality but i can't relate to his stand-up like does that make sense like i love the fella but i can't and i i love like how he you know interacts with people and i love listening to his podcast but as a comedian i just don't get it like do you want me to give you the answer like the protective answer just uh in case I'm on the Joe Rogan experience one day or um, do you want, or do you want me to give you the, the real answer? Well, oh. I, saw, I saw, I saw him at the fucking comedy store a couple of years ago when I saw Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan did not blow the roof off. No, yeah. he did not blow the roof off, but there were, there were a lot of people laughing and I was watching them laugh and I was like, are they laughing because he's Joe Rogan or the inflection yeah. of his voice? Are they actually listening to what he's saying? But yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I've never found it. It's not my type of comedy. Yeah, me either. But I love the guy. I just, I just don't find his stand up that. Funny. But neither is, neither is Jim Jeffries. I don't, I, I never, I've tried to get on Jim Jeffries for fucking years, but I've just, never been fully on board yeah well, look i feel like jim jeffries got to me when i was like a kid like it was yeah. funny when i was a kid just because he said like cunt <laughs> like, on, like, on TV. like it was just funny it was just like <laughs> <laughs> when you're just like a goofy little kid in high school like the, and then as i've gotten older and i start to watch it more and more it's i i i it, i become a little bit more disassociated from it a year every year that goes by like, cause he'll yeah. put out end up special. I'll go back on Netflix and watch it. And I just, it's just not as funny as it was when I was in year nine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also very jaded with comedy now as well. So even like the really, really good specials that are coming out. Yeah. Like I get like 20 minutes into it and I'm like, yeah, all right. That's, that's all right. Is Shane Gillis. The mechanics behind it. Like you yeah, there's like the surprise is gone and like it has to be it has to be pretty dark for me to even enjoy. Like uh, like you know, like you know when you you watch too much porn and just normal porn isn't going to do it for you, so you go more and more extreme until you end up at like gay porn and then um <laughs> That's the same with stand up for me. I only like to watch gay stand up. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I just I just have watched too much of it now. Nice, man. Well And uh... also there's a thing with the video. The video takes away a lot. Yeah. I prefer listening to stand up just audio. Yeah, if yeah, I do. I... I, I agree, man, because when, I, like, as a kid, that's how I dis- like discovered comedy for the first time was when I first got like a bar of Telstra signal on my phone, which was a real yeah. rarity. They expanded <laughs> the satellites to cover the farm and you could download Pandora and Pandora would just start like was free and you could just listen to comedy on repeat and it would show like 
audios of fucking like Kevin Hart and like um like Dave Chappelle skits and like um all those all those kind of American guys and I was just like would laugh my head off and have to walk around the paddock in a circle where the bar of Telstra <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was on a flight once back from wherever the fuck I was coming back, and they had some comedy albums on, like the audio thing. Yeah. And they had they had this guy named Mike Berbiglia. Yeah. And I would never have listened to his shit normally, and I put it on, and I just fucking laughed my ass off all the way uh, back on the flight. And I was like, the audio just made it so much better than watching him. And then I went to Netflix and watched his special. And I was like, nah, it, it just didn't, it, it didn't give me the same thing as the audio. Yeah, yeah. And Bill Bird just released a vinyl album as well. So people, people are starting to just release the audio. Which I think I, I is better. Like I listen to you now religiously every day for like the past three months and i find it funny because you're not you're not like i I, you must feel very comfortable when you're doing that and you can kind of tell like does that make sense like it feels very genuine and very yeah funny yeah it's sort of like i've done 860 episodes now or something like that so or 870 or i can't remember but yeah, at the start it wasn't very comfortable, but now, now it's all right. Yeah, yeah. Now it's almost like I have to do it. It's a compulsion to me. Like if I didn't have it, I don't know what the fuck I would be doing. Well, I'm glad you do, man, because it's just get, like every day there's something to look forward to, especially now in fucking lockdown. Like this is this is the best thing about lockdown that I've yeah. personally. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No, I, like, I seriously mean it. It's the most interesting thing to listen to because it's like there's not a lot of bullshit. Yeah, I try and keep all the bullshit out of it. Even if I, even if I see myself trying to like cover something up or not say something, I, I push myself to say it. I deliberately say it or I deliberately say something worse than that to stop yeah. myself from being, from being a pussy. I just I, I wanted it I I wanted it to be as truthful as I can possibly get and still live my life. <laughs> yeah. Like without destroying my life completely. So yeah. And do you know the funny thing is I like for most of my life I I wouldn't tell anyone anything. Like I was very like I kept shit to myself and like I don't know when, and when I started doing this, it just opened everything up, but it strengthen it strengthens you when you, when you start unraveling all the shit you're trying to hide. You're like it's, Eminem in eight mile. Right. At the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And instead of like making it, I just go back to the trailer park. <laughs> I'm I'm always at the trailer park. <laughs> just just on episodes you do for Spotify, did you expect to do those many episodes or do you just gonna like because I feel like they're like diary entries of you quitting alcohol? Did you expect it to go to like 800 episodes? Nah, nah. I when I first started, I was I was gonna do 30 days, I was gonna do a month, yeah. and then I was gonna like maybe do like an episode every two or three days and then i was going to do one every week Mm. and then after about 30 days i was like nah i've I've just got to continue doing this it's sort of interlinked with the quitting alcohol so it gave me something to do every day made me work harder than i i normally would work i had to think every day i had to i had to develop my voice like it, it it gave me a lot of things as well. Mm. So, and, and I take for people I enjoyed to doing jump, it. Jump on, you know, on the on the on your podcast bandwagon and and really stand with you. Like, how long did it take to reach an audience? Um, well, it it's always sort of growing, but like because I'd had such a low level of success with everything when 
when a hundred people started listening to it, I was like over the moon. I was, I was so fucking happy when a hundred people started listening to it. And then it's, it's slowly gone up over the last two and a half years. But now I've got a pretty strong little base of people that listen to it. I, I'm not too sure how big it is, but I try and interact with everyone who messages me and, I a lot of people ask me questions about drinking el- uh quitting alcohol and all this sort of stuff so I'm still excited that people interact with me just random people interact with me it's it like you guys that was exciting to me as well I was like yeah cool I'll be on some fucking podcast oh geez. it's all cool it's all cool to me I, because yeah I spent so long with nothing that something anything is great i love it oh man i like look i just i i thought you you know i didn't ever think that you would come on our podcast like i was telling all the boys for weeks we should have this we should try to get this guy on our show there's no way we'll ever get him on our show like this is it's just you know and now it's happening i almost have to pinch myself that we're here no nah, man i was happy i was happy to get that message Oh, cheers, man. I, it's, I hope it's everyone cool. that watches this goes over and fucking checks out your shit. And I mean, because like a lot of you loose units watch our show that just play music. And I hope that they just go and check out your shit because they'll fall in. Yeah, love. get those fucking loose units over to my shit. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a few people who are from like the Sydney music scene that uh, listen to the podcast. Cool. Yeah, right. jo- Jordan Van Gaal, we interviewed from Bad Moonborn. He's on a one-year sorority as well. So he's been off for a year himself. I, really? Uh, a, yeah, so we, I brought that up. He goes, yeah. So he he was telling me as how um he had to, like, get on stage, but he had to, like, figure out how to get on stage because he was drinking before and he, was, like, had a conference, but he had to figure out how to perform on stage without alcohol. Yeah, yeah. So you have it was, to, like, yeah. You have to learn to be sober yeah. and... Mm. That's an that's another thing that's that's fucking hard. The social interactions because it's been your crutch the whole life, your whole life. Yeah, man. That's that's my thing. Like that's when I when I was seventeen when I moved to Sydney and um, then started studying music and playing gigs. And I mean, that's when I really started drinking was just to fucking not not be nervous inside and you know. Yeah. And also, like now, I do a bit of like do this and I do radio and a couple other things, but you know, doing that while being, you know, sober and clear headed was a real fucking, Oh shit. You know, like how the fuck yeah. do this? You know? And, um, and it's been cool to kind of figure it out. And now I feel like I, you know, can take credit for, for doing it. So, but like, I feel like it's more my own work now. Does that make sense in a way? A hundred percent understand. Yeah. It's, because it's more the real you who's interacting yeah with with the world it's instead of much. instead of instead of having that like layer of drunkenness between you <laughs> and and the world you have just you and the world yeah that's that was very hard for me when i first quit drinking was the because i quit drinking a bunch of times but learning that social interaction shit was very fucking hard yeah it takes it takes a while <laughs> and what tips would you give for that you just gotta it's like anything you just gotta go out there and practice yeah like even now i feel like i'm just starting to come out of my shell because i'm generally a little bit of a shy person and i'm just starting to like overcome the social shyness as well and I'm starting to, in my interactions, I'm starting to be like more outgoing and it's take, that's taken two and a half years and I go out a lot because I'm at, I'm at gigs a lot and everyone I know drinks. And so I'm at, I'm at bars a fair bit and it's just practice. You just go out there, practice, practice. Yeah. And eventually, eventually you'll overcome whatever bullshit is holding you back. Yeah, man. Like that's one thing that um, I'm like a little bit nervous for is like when everything opens back. But um, 
I'm surprised to hear that you're a shy person because I never would have thought, you know, like you come across as fucking, you know, the dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but like it takes a, it takes a bit of energy. Yeah. Like uh, I I spend a lot of time by myself in mm. locked locked away in a room, either like reading or writing or something like that, and or podcasting, and like when i go out into the world it sucks all my energy out so i have to rejuvenate it really does suck all my energy out especially if especially if i'm hanging out with drinkers after after a little while after about an hour and a half two hours i'm done yeah uh, people have had like six seven eight beers they get repetitive they get fucking annoying and then i have to i have to leave them good <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. you'll you'll see it when it opens back up man fucking time it to the clock it's either anything after six beers or anything after like an hour and a half two hours yeah you, you'll be done you'll be done with your your friends <laughs> can you tap into that though a little bit like when not when they're on the first couple of rounds you know whenever yeah like that spike in confidence do you suddenly go oh, okay now i'm out and about yeah i i encourage them to drink like that those those <laughs> those first four five drinks where everyone's got a good energy everyone's like fired up they don't know what's going to happen with the night i can feed off that energy and that's where i've been coming out of my shell a little bit is i've been able to match their energy with uh those first four or five drinks but after that it's you can you can visibly see them Get, starting to get confused <laughs> starting to repeat themselves it's crazy man it's it's crazy that you can see those effects after like six drinks and then you will continue to drink for the next 18 hours <laughs> <laughs> until you're just completely blacked out has it like but there's in a way like you going out now and, and seeing that like does it does it make it more of a like i can't get the words together i want right now but does it make it more easier for you i suppose not to drink then because you can see like this this guy's rambling on and going around the same circle and he's told you the same story about four times and fuck i do not want to be in that position anymore you, you know it's not necessarily that but I, I tell you whenever i go out with people it doesn't matter who it really is. I'm not seeing that many people having genuine, genuine fun. Yeah. So like you, you don't see it that much. Like you do occasionally you do, but like it's, it's not as regular as you would think it is. So I'm never really jealous of the people I'm hanging out with and drinking uh, that are drinking or anything like that or partying and yeah so it it it's not enticing yeah like i i always liked oasis when i was a when i was a kid and liam gallagher once famously said if i'm gonna go out and drink i'm gonna have a hundred not one and yeah uh, i always took that mentality and when i see people that just have a couple i'm like what's so fun in that you know like i don't understand that it's like go hard or go home yeah that's, well like that's i think now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Paulie, you look like someone that has has a hundred. You look like someone who has a pretty good fucking time. Yeah, um, I hope so. Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> but, but I never but, encourage anyone to drink, though. I respect all of the decisions. <laughs> but as long as they're having fun themselves, I'm happy. Yeah, that's all I used to do is encourage people to drink. Still do, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually do. I actually do. Because my wife and her friends... Like the Indians that I've been hanging out with with here, they have a completely different like drinking idea to Australians. Like they don't lose control. They they keep themselves at that drunk level where they're still in complete control. And I try and encourage them to lose a little bit, but they just they just never do. Yeah, I can't I can't do that. Have you got? No, any neither. Or because you got a liver of steel. Oh well, I, well in lockdown I've kind of probably lost it, 
But I need to, <laughs> might have to train myself up again for that first day back, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, but it's accumulative. So if you're drinking a lot, it, it the practice doesn't help. That that will just fuck you. Yeah, I think the first, <laughs> I think the first day after last lockdown, I went back to the pub. I had like two beers. I'm like, oh shit, I can feel this. I was like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> I don't like feeling. <laughs> what do you mean? You and I were going through cases when we were doing the podcast last lockdown. There was times where we'd have to. Yeah, but yeah, that was like, that was like once, twice a week. You know, you gotta once a week. I do, I do miss getting blackout drunk though. To be honest with you, that that's like meditation. You just get into the space <laughs> where there's no, where only one thought can just pop into your head at a time. Did you ever wake some- up with fear though the next morning? Like I remember waking up with fear a couple of times, especially hanging out with you, Paul, and fucking singing and having no real recollection of like you publicly singing in places. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, fear. the yeah. fear. The fear was just constant, constant. Even, even sometimes I would get the fear of a night that happened like five years previous and just go, fuck it. That was really dangerous. That was a dangerous <laughs> situation I was in there. And do you look back f- on those times and go, fuck man, I'm so lucky to be alive. Yeah. I, especially doing the podcast. I'm like, fuck, I dodged a lot of bullets. <laughs> I, I dodged, I dodged more than your, your average Joe. Because yeah. I was, because the extreme of the drinking, I would throw myself into like dangerous situations, yeah. just to just to get my kicks, really. And yeah, thinking back on it, it's like fuck. Did you ever get injured at all? Like, I, I, I got my um, I got my face bitten by an Irishman <laughs> <laughs> once. I got jumped. Do you know Paddy Maguire's in the city? It used to be Paddy Maguire's near uh, Chinatown. No, uh, do you know Paul? Uh, uh, it might be a different name now. It might be yeah, Scruffy it's, Murphy's. I don't know. No, nah, no, nah, Scruffy Murphy's was around the corner. It's right near the Capitol Theatre. It used to be called Paddy Maguire's, and um, it's called something else now. It's like Q Bar or some shit like that. But uh, I got jumped by an Irish dude in the toilets downstairs there because I was, I was speaking to a girl at the bar. Yeah. There was a big, there was a big line at the bar. I was speaking to a girl. We were just having a bullshit conversation. I got my beer. She got her beer. We walked off different directions and I was coming back through to go to the toilet and I saw her and I started speaking to her. And then there was an Irish guy at the table just going, fuck off, you cunt, fuck off. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, just fuck off. She's fucking married. And I'm like, <clears throat> whatever. I don't give a shit. I'm going to the toilet. So I went down to the toilet and I'm in a cubicle and I'm taking a leak and I just start fucking feeling punches <sighs> to, the back, to the back of my head. And so he's smashing me in the back of the head. I turn around and it's that fucking Irish guy from the table. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing here? So I kick off my jeans and so I'm in my boxes and I push him through and I try and run out so I can get some space between me and this guy. And I run up the stairs. He pulls my leg, drags me back down and we just start fighting. But I'm hammered. I'm, I'm proper, like can barely speak hammered. And so I get him, we start fighting and I pull him in too close to punch him and I pull his face close to mine and he just bites into my fucking lip oh. and like he's, he's got his teeth <laughs> on my top lip. And so I try and eye gouge him, like try and yeah, get yeah. him to let, let go. He's not letting go. I'm trying to smash him in the balls to let him go, to oh. make him let go nothing's working so i just grab his face and just while he's biting on my lip just push it away like that and my lip just goes and just ends up fucking mangled Mm -hmm. and i went like this and my fucking arm was covered in blood and when i was like when it was covered in blood he just starts smashing me in the head and i i just sort of went into shock 
and the cunt fucking ended up biting me on the leg. I was on the ground and he was like punching me in the head against the, the rock wall. And then he bit me on the leg while I had my boxes on. I had no jeans on. And then I ended up, yeah, having to get, having to get like a plastic surgery done to this lip and all this sort of shit. Ended up, <clears throat> I ended up banging my nurse though. <laughs> rock and roll yeah so that was sweet and but what yeah what happened to conor mcgregor pardon what happened to conor mcgregor oh the police the police went after him hard but he when they arrested him they tried to take his picture but he wouldn't he wouldn't let let them take the picture properly and they're like would you be able to point him out i'm like i don't know what the fuck he looks like and they're like we put a stop on his passport he just fled around australia for like a couple of years and in the end i didn't i didn't really care yeah right it was just it was just one of those things i i probably deserved it from some other bullshit anyway oh man you've you've that's certainly a battle scar and a half fucking hell yeah that that was um that was a shock to the system Fuck man, I've never heard of a guy having a brawl and just starts biting people. Like that's that's a real strange kind of bloke. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I was lucky to get out of that one because he could. Oh, yeah. you can you can't see it under my moustache, but it's like all the way here. He could if he took that chunk fully out, that could have been disastrous for me. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Or if you got the tip, I've heard I've heard people in fights getting the tip of their nose bitten off. That's a thing, especially oh. in like Ireland and Scotland and stuff like that. But yeah, I sort of came out of it all right. So I wasn't too I wasn't too bothered. Fuck man. Um and like and how long how long were you drinking after that for? Like years, like 15 years. <laughs> that had no nah, that that happened no nah, another 12 years after that i i was drinking i didn't think anything of that i didn't think it had anything to do with the drinking it took me a long it took me a long time to like piece everything together yeah. that the that the drinking was the cause of most of my problems it took a long fucking time how did you how did you like when did it when did it dawn on you because for me it dawned on me when like the hangovers got fucking just just the worst like you wouldn't get out of bed till like two or three o'clock yeah that's that's when i was like that's when it crosses over from only having good times or like majority good times and a few bad times to fuck almost all the times are bad times and you get a few good times that's that's when you you best to check out of the drinking when the when the bad times overtake the good but I'd, it it dawned on me the final one was when i realized i can't have alcohol in my life at all because i tried everything to keep it in like i like i tried everything like only drinking on weekends, only drinking on holidays, only trying to have a few here, like keep it less than five. I tried everything and then it all ended up exactly the same. It would be me fucking arrested somewhere or in some bullshit fight or just something. It'd be some disaster. How many times did you get arrested? Like in my life. Yeah, yeah. In my life, man, probably, <laughs> probably like twenty times. I don't know, a lot, a lot. I is was arrested a lot. There? Pardon? Is there is there one that comes to mind, which is a like an epic story? Fuck. The the last. I'll tell you the last time I got arrested. That was like two years ago. So that wasn't even long ago. Um, I was at. I was at the Perth uh, Fringe Festival doing comedy and <laughs> I was doing, I was doing it. I was doing a gig with a few other guys and we had a shit, 
a shit show the first three shows. And then we had this really good show on the fourth one. Heaps of people came. We all smashed. So we thought we were like gods. And we just started drinking after the show, drank all night, woke up the next morning in the hostel. And me and one of the other comedians were like, let's just fucking, let's kick on. It was like 11 a.m. or something like that. And um, so we did. Sorry, I just need to plug this in. So we kicked so we kicked on and then by one o'clock we got kicked out of the first place and we went to the second place. We were we were smashed. We went to the second place and they wouldn't serve us alcohol. This is in Perth, the middle of Perth. And the lady was trying to kick us out and we wouldn't leave. And she's like, I'm gonna call the police. And the other comedian was like, let's just get arrested. I'm like, nah, I don't want to get fucking arrested. I've, I've been arrested enough. You get arrested. So he walks downstairs, walks out one door. I walk out another door. I turn the corner. My mate's getting arrested. I walk down the street and I'm about 100 meters away. And they're throwing my mate into the back of the divvy van. And for some fucking reason, I decide to go in the middle of the street because I thought I was far enough away. So I go, fuck you, piggers, and start running. And the cop, one of the cops starts chasing me and he's on me in like five meters. <laughs> like he, catch, he catches up to me almost immediately. I'm hammered. I'm unfit. I'm wearing thongs. And this cop is like an athlete and he's fucking on me. So I, I'm like, I try and put a move. I try and put a step on this guy. So I run directly at a tree and try and put a goose step on him. But I run into the tree <laughs> and, <laughs> and I fall into the middle of the road in Perth. He jumps on top of me. And then the other police officer comes by with his nightstick and just fucking slams me in the side of the fucking leg. You can see the photo of the bruise he gave me on my leg on Instagram, if you go oh, back a few photos. Pink, like purple? Yeah, 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 that's that. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, so we, got, we got arrested We're in the back of the Divi van. And when we're in the back of the Divi van, the the comedian I was hanging out with is like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, what? He's like, oh, I have a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> These are the types of comedians I'm hanging out with. And I'm like, what for? And he's like, assaulting a police officer. And I'm like, oh, you're in trouble, man. So we're in, we're in lockup. And my mate's not given his name because he doesn't want the warrant to, to pop up. And I give my name because I'm like, fucking whatever. So they let me out after like two and a half, three hours and just send me, send me out into the world. And my mate ended up spending three weeks in jail <laughs> waiting, waiting for, to get bail for the other case, the <coughs> assaulting a police officer. Is Perth so jail fucking horrid? It wasn't too bad because I was in, in there with the comedian and we were just in like the drunk sort of the drunk tank. So it was just me and him. It, it was fine. But he said, he said um, he got a guitar while he was in jail. So he was in remand and remand is like in between jail. And um, he got a guitar and was singing and he was fine. He said it was fine. <laughs> so there's a lesson for you jail's all right so th that that was that was two years ago or two and a half years ago and i'd had a kid by then like i was a dad i was working like it was just embarrassing to be in that situation again at my age it was like like, am I ever going to grow up? So that was another catalyst to quit drinking. Well, man, like, it looks like you've stayed out of trouble since. Yeah, yeah, more or less. And and you're keeping other people out of trouble now. I feel like by you know doing doing this and telling your 
telling your story. So I feel like that's a good thing. You've, you've turned a negative into a positive. So that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, just at the last minute. Oh, man, that's awesome. How long have we been running here for, boys? Uh, maybe an, almost an hour, probably an hour now, which is, be, which is good quality, actually. It's really fun. Uh, I'm going to be running out of internet in about five minutes as well. So, All right. Well, I don't want to hold you up and um, I don't want to hold I've got, you up either. I've got a goat to kill. <laughs> <laughs> you say you postpone a goat's life for another couple of hours it's probably all i know i'll just get over and done with i'm dead anyway it's probably like lying yeah. waiting for you <laughs> god, god i can't i can't watch that shit so yeah. i'm sa- we're sacrificing a goat today in india just so, just clarify what it's for so people don't think that it's a satanistic act <laughs> yeah just cover myself in goat blood no it's for um it's a combination my daughter turned one uh two days ago and uh, my sister-in-law got married like last week. So it's one of those celebrations, one of those Indian things. So a couple of chickens and a goat are going to die t- today <laughs> in, in, in honour of them. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think the goat would love us for giving him a couple more minutes here. Definitely, definitely. Now, before we wrap this up, um, what yep. would you like to say to the people out there? Like, have you got anything you want to plug other than the podcast? And no, nah, just just don't watch commercial fucking mainstream comedy. Don't listen to commercial radio. Just find find some dudes in the bushes or some ladies in the bushes doing their own thing and support them. Same with musicians. Support. Find some underground people support them fuck what they're trying to dish out to you i think i might have been using internet oh no boy have you gone you there i'm just hanging in there did you get any of that yeah we did yeah we have but you're frozen and you look a bit like joe rogan and this on this (laughs) angle that's frozen (laughs) uh it's my internet's fucked now that's right all right just quickly um it's it's gone uh, where can everyone find the podcast quickly? It's I'm quitting alcohol on all platforms. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks. Thanks for that, David. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. No, that's yeah. <laughs> it was it gone. David Boyle, everybody. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs>